So our subject this afternoon, oh, after we say the chant. <laughs> well, of course, this chant is our subject this afternoon. May all sentient beings enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the root of suffering. May they not be separated from the great happiness devoid of suffering. May they dwell in the great equanimity free from passion, aggression, and prejudice. So this afternoon, we're moving on to the second line of this aspiration chant. May they or may we be free from suffering and the root of suffering. And um, I'm sure I don't have to tell you what suffering is. Uh, but the root of suffering I went through this morning uh, gave a very simple definition that it's struggle, struggling with your, with things as they are, struggling with your self as you are, struggling with other people as they are, circumstances as they are. This morning we did the uh, practice of loving kindness, starting with receiving love, then beginning to expand it. Uh, sending the, uh, expressing the aspiration for our own uh, happiness. May we, and may I enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And then expanding it to a loved one or loved ones. Then a neutral person or a stranger. And I suggested that you might just choose one person where their face could come to mind. Um, and do it for them. And then finally, uh, someone that you find very challenging, irritating. And uh, I should say again that the person in this category, it's best not to use uh, people that, uh, that thinking of them or uh, being in relationship with them is traumatizing. In other words, the real humdingers. Just work with, just work with uh, the uh, irritations, the uh, uh, short-term dislikes, or that kind of thing. And that's good enough, because if you work with that, uh, then your capacity to stay open to the discomfort of, of uh, remaining in the visualized presence of someone that's challenging to you, uh, even though it's just a minor thing, perhaps, uh, that you are training to be able to stay open in uh, the, even the most challenging situations with people that actually have been cruel and hurt you in the past or in the present. This is uh, one of the very hardest things for us to do as human beings. Uh, and I never underestimate how uh, challenging it is to remain present to uh, feelings, whether they're physical or emotional, that are painful. We are just uh, definitely not in any way familiar with that experience. Um, uh, it's something that we train in. Uh, staying present with our self uh, when we feel uh, pain, when we feel um, get, that we're getting worked up in one way or another. So much of the spiritual path is uh, allowing those feelings to be there, just changing your attitude towards uh, pain. And changing your attitude really means changing your heart towards pain, and realizing that uh, you can stay present with those feelings, even if it's just a second longer than you could do previously. 
and those seconds kind of add up until it's a, a, a minute longer than you used to be able to. And then those minutes add up. So it's uh, progressive that way. My experience and uh, an experience that's been shared with me by a lot of people is that uh, once you sort of get the hang of it, what, it, what these words are pointing to, to stay present with something that uh, is painful. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a little distress or a large one. Uh, once you get the hang of it, then, uh, then you have confidence that it's something that you can do, usually in small increments, inch by inch, bit by bit, small step by small step, getting used to uh, allowing that part of our experience to be here, becoming familiar with the part of our experience which we categorize, categorize as unwanted or unpleasant or frightening, uh, anything in that, that column of uh, I don't want it. So this is a good uh, segue into our topic for the afternoon, which is pain. Uh, which is compassion, which is about pain. Uh, as I mentioned last night, when Ken McLeod teaches about uh, doing the practice of compassion, con um, awakening the heart of compassion for oneself and other people, he says that it's, uh, it brings you very close to your fear of pain. Because compassion, um, again, as I mentioned last night, is a lot more challenging than the practice of metta or maitri or loving kindness. And it's challenging because it means uh, willing to feel the pain that you feel, again, starting with oneself, and then uh, based on that foundation of being willing to feel your own pain, you're willing to feel the pain of other people, or at least you're willing to feel the pain that thinking about that person's predicament or being in the presence of that person who is uh, uh, afraid or suffering in some way, um, you're willing to stay present with what that triggers in you, what that uh, provokes in you, what that activates in you. So compassion is uh, associated with um, being starting where you are with the little, or, uh, with whatever limited amount of compassion you already have, whatever uh, uh, limited amount of empathy you already have, a little whatever amount of being able to stand in someone else's shoes, being able to be in the presence of someone whose uh, situation is uh, bringing up fear for you, bringing up uh, pain for you. Uh, being able to do that um, becomes the, uh, the doorway into being able to do it for uh, 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 larger and larger numbers of people, and including all the categories which are traditionally uh, used that we did this morning of doing it for oneself, doing it for um, uh, loved ones, doing it for the neutral person, doing it for the difficult person, doing it for all sentient beings, wishing them to be free of suffering. But it's, it, is, uh, it does up the ante, uh, beginning to do compassion practice. So the reason uh, that we have difficulty with compassion, I'm saying, repeating myself here, but the re reason we have difficulty with it uh, is because we fear the pain so much. And so part of the practice becomes uh, noting our fear, allowing our fear to be there, and noting, acknowledging that we're afraid, and not trying to change it, but by becoming very familiar with the um, feeling of fear. So this morning when we were doing the loving kindness uh, practice, uh, we went through the stages, and um, I'm sure there were 550 or whatever number we are 
uh, personal experiences of that. Everything from nothing happening at all to uh, feeling some uh, heart connection and, every, and a lot of anything in between. But um, if in doing the practice you experience a shutdown in some way, you experience that it's not flowing freely, that there's something blocking your ability to feel love, or in this case, this afternoon, feel compassion. What is the instruction then about what to do with that? Well, first instruction is uh, you haven't done anything wrong. You know, like there's no reason that you have to feel that uh, you're ruining a perfectly good practice by being who you are. Uh, what is the instruction uh, on what to do when um, the heart is frozen, when the mind is closed, when nothing is happening, and you're saying these seemingly empty words, you know, may I enjoy happiness, may I be free of suffering, and the root of suffering, or may my uh, beloved child, or my beloved grandmother, or my beloved uh, partner, or my beloved uh, horse, or whatever it is, uh, be, enjoy happiness and the root of happiness, be free of suffering and the root of suffering. And even though uh, those are supposed to be the very beings that uh, connect you with the feeling of open heart, nothing is happening. So what are you supposed to do? Or maybe you do fine with your uh, grandchild, but then when you get to neutral people, sure, it's very common that then maybe you just kind of go numb. Um, and when you get to difficult people, then all kinds, all, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> so what are we supposed to do? So uh, as you, probably a lot of you know and listen to tapes and read books and things where I've talked about uh, uh, different ways of staying present with uh, pain, the, the lean into the sharp points uh, approach. Uh, but, but the main instruction here is just to note it with a feeling of kind heart and not necessarily shift away from the uh, practice of extending uh, loving kindness or extending compassion, but just to note that you feel closed or you feel afraid or that there's something blocking the flow. You feel numb. Uh, you feel indifferent, it all feels empty to you, or you're becoming overwhelmed with, uh, uh, so particularly with compassion, it's uh, common to feel overwhelmed, that you connect so much with the feeling of uh, someone else's pain that it, you, it scares you, and you, it's hard to stay present because of the feeling of being overwhelmed by it. So in that case, which is uh, almost certain to happen at some point or other. Um, even if not in one given session, it might happen the next time you practice or somewhere in the practice. If that happens, just acknowledge that it's happened without, um, without adding anything extra. Just acknowledge it with a kind heart. Um, acknowledge it with uh, kindness, with tenderness, uh, with uh, compassion. Just acknowledge that you like are just an ordinary human being and uh, uh, you share this quality with all humanity that, that these qualities sometimes do not flow free freely. And you might say in, in your case, maybe that you feel they never flow, flow free freely. But in any case, just note that uh, the heart is closed or that something is, uh, there's some sense of blockage. Just note that not as a problem, but as uh, something that just by noting it, you begin to become more familiar with it and more intimate with it and uh, you're moving closer to it. It's unacknowledged uh, habitual patterns, unacknowledged fears that cause us a lot of suffering and grief. But when we can acknowledge them, 
it still hurts, but there is this uh, big difference, which is that there is an open awareness of whatever is occurring. So, uh, it, so the instruction is to kind of just, even if it feels empty, that you just continue to move through the stages. And uh, I said this morning that if you just feel it, that you're, uh, that it's very cold and empty and nothing is happening, another thing you can do, uh, which is to go back to the feeling of, in, in this morning's practice, the benefactor or benefactors sending you love and just do that for a while. And then uh, um, you could just continue with doing that. Uh, if that's the basis that you need, you could just continue with doing it. But if it helps then to ignite something, you can go back then to sending love to yourself, sending love to uh, uh, loved ones and through the line like that. So this afternoon, the practice will be start with the benefactors sending you compassion. And I'm going to talk a bit about that. So the, what I'm trying to address here at the beginning of this talk is what to do uh, when uh, the heart is not just opening and it's not all just sailing through the whole practice. And so I hope I've made that clear that in, you, you can return to the receiving of love or compassion, uh, to just return to uh, some feeling of warmth. And in any case, uh, even if that works, or even if it doesn't work, to acknowledge uh, with kindness and uh, compassion that uh, there is this uh, obscuration there. So that goes a long way. Uh, they, they say that uh, one of the foundations of spiritual practice is friendly to oneself and merciful to others and that they go together like that, to be friendly to oneself and merciful to others. And um, usually it's, uh, you know, um, neither, you know, <laughs> neither friendly to oneself nor merciful to others. So, uh, so these practices are to help you, uh, it's like an education for the heart, uh, a uh, connecting with, uh, uh, the warmth of your being, the natural warmth, which can be uh, tapped into at any time. The natural warmth, which is part of the uh, open awareness. Uh, when, when, you, uh, when you acknowledge these qualities with that open awareness and just acknowledge that it's happening, that is already uh, a big step on uh, awakening the heart or educating the heart or tapping into the soft spot or the, our uh, innate qualities of warmth, the qualities of the heart. <laughs>